watching WEDU. This special presentation was produced in high definition by WEDU, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota. Meet Sassy, some beautifully skilled athletes. A coach who teaches tennis and life. Go on a treasure hunt, high tech style, and see the babies, the hatchling turtles heading home in this volume of a Gulf Coast Journal. This WEDU production is exclusively brought to you through a generous grant from the Gulf Coast Community Foundation of Venice, building strong communities through leadership, partnership, and endowed philanthropy. Dear Journal, those of us who have reached a, a certain age, shall I say, and I think you know what I mean, a certain age have fond recollections of, as kids, going out on treasure hunts. Well, without saying how long ago that might have been, I can tell you that when we went on a treasure hunt, we did not use a GPS. But today, that's the high-tech way of going on a treasure hunt. And it's not just kids, and it's still a lot of fun. A peaceful morning on the Braden River. The wildlife who call this little slice of heaven home are about to have some company. Just says, hey, I want to go That's in this direction, longitude. you know, 0.45 miles. Mm -hmm. Hunters are coming. Well, then. No, the not the, the variety you might think. These are high-tech yeah. treasure hunters also known as geocachers. They have big plans on the river this morning. Well, I'm expecting to find a geocache and, and find a treasure in it. <laughs> We're going on a, a treasure hunt determined by coordinates, uh, latitude and longitude. Geocaching is a sport that uses GPS technology to locate hidden treasures or caches anywhere in the world. In the boat. Good boy. You may need to hike or climb or bike or drive or, in this case, kayak your way to get to the treasure. A nice windless day. For Bill Halstead, Lori Dengler, and Kathy Coglin, geocaching is a new adventure. It really seems pretty straightforward. So the strategy is just to be very mindful of what's going on. This is not the game of hide and seek we played as children. The simplest explanation of geocaching is we use multi-million dollar military satellites to find Tupperware hidden in the woods. Scott Vikes is a serious player of the game and he delights in introducing geocaching to other people. One of the standard containers that a lot of people use is a military ammo can. Mm -hmm. He tells us the game got its legs just a few years ago, back in 2000. The government lifted restrictions on satellites that allowed anyone with GPSs to find locations within a few feet. People began hiding little treasures out in the world, and other people began finding them. Just for the pleasure of it, the sport of geocaching was born. They're everywhere from in the, on the rivers, in the woods, in cities, in parking lots, stores, historical markers, historical places. There's geocaches of all flavor, of all sizes, of all types. Team members can sign up for free on the official website and choose from hundreds of hidden caches right in their own area. You got the cache name, the coordinates. It's a difficulty in terrain of 5-5 five, because five, it's a paddle only cache. You need a boat to get to it. There are more than 800,000 around the globe. They come with coordinates, even a map, and perhaps clues to help you along. So what's actually inside a geocache? Right, to the left. 
Now let's see if our kayaking crew is up to the challenge of finding out for themselves. According to the GPS, the team is now within 400 feet of the prize. I don't see anything over here. After searching near the riverbank, the team is puzzled. They know they're close, but everything looks the same, just water and cattails. It's not a perfect science. Your GPS might tell you one second it's over here, and 30 seconds later it's telling you it's 150 feet in another direction. So it just gets you in the general vicinity, which in the geocaching community we call ground zero. Uh, I see it, I see it, I see it. The team finds the cache in a crab trap submerged in the river. Inside the watertight container, a log book for them to sign, and a specially minted coin. Oh, the Geo coin, Old Brain River Historical Society Geo coin. The coin has a tracking number. And we'll be able to track that online with, so when we plant that in another geocache, we can tell where it goes around the world. And then they will replace the coin with another item for the next geocachers to find. Okay, bye-bye, Mr. Bird Call. This one is an Audubon bird call. Happy traveling, happy caching. Everything is carefully put back into place and the team glides on victory back to terra firma, satisfied that they have mastered their first geocaching challenge. And there will be more. We are yeah, officially yeah, geocachers. Geocachers <laughs> and geocachettes. <laughs> Mastering the find is only half the fun. Denise Kleiner is the owner of the geocache that the group found today. That means she is the one who did the hiding. You could have a person who has one or two caches hidden in their neighborhood, or you can have a person who's traveled all over the world in hidden caches. So what goes into preparing and hiding a geocache? Scott is showing Lynn Longenecker how it's done. You said you had a good spot to put it? I have a great spot, I think. Oh, let's head yeah. over there. Let's go find it. This lovely old oak tree looks as if it can keep a secret. So this is the Bodhi tree you were talking about. Yeah, it's a, a very unique oak tree. Geocaches are never buried in the earth, so there's no digging. Cache owners may choose to use natural elements around them to camouflage their treasure. And Spanish moss is alive, so it will continue to grow wherever we place it. They mark the spot with the GPS, get its reading, its coordinates, then walk several yards away to validate that the coordinates are sound. 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, bingo. Dead on then back to the website to publish their listing. And they're in business. Another gauntlet thrown down for the next fearless treasure hunters. <laughs> Geocaching is proving to be more than a game or a sport. It's, it's also something about community. It really helped bring our community together. We live in a, a very wonderful place in Florida that we're trying to keep as beautiful as you can see it now. A game that puts friends in touch with nature and in touch with fun. Not a bad way to pass the time on a peaceful morning.